Hey, time for a build from the junk box. Um, I've got a few spare parts here and there, and um, I thought I'd put them together to something uh, useful. So, um, I've got this 10 megahertz oven control crystal oscillator, which I pulled out of something. Might have been a CDMA test set, like an old uh, mobile phone test set. Uh, they're good for this sort of stuff. If you get them cheap, like the old CDMA or 3G or 2G, whatever, if you find those things real cheap, you can often find some useful uh, bits inside, including oven control crystal oscillators. So I thought I was going to make something uh, uh, useful out of this stuff, because it's just uh, gear that I've got sitting around. And um, so I thought I'd make a, um, a little portable handheld kind of uh, frequency reference, just for the fun of it. And um, yeah, out of just stuff from the junk box. I did buy the uh, case because this one is kind of really nice and sexy, so that's not from the junk box. And also, what's inside here is not from the junk box, that's from the uh, channel sponsor PCBWay. Special thanks to them for the circuit boards. But all the rest of the bits, uh, eBay boost converter, some BNC jacks, the uh, oven control crystal oscillator itself, and a few other bits and pieces will be just from what I've got laying around. So, um, yeah, you can probably replicate this um, from any like well-stocked junk box, or at least uh, with a minimal, you know, purchase of parts. So inside the box, we've got oh a couple little stickers and a pen. Always good to get a pen. I'm always losing those things. And the circuit board. So basically, the idea is we've got the uh, oven control crystal oscillator that will sit on the circuit board, and then I plan to hopefully, if it works, have two outputs. A sign output and a TTL output. So that will sit there like that. Beautiful. It does actually fit. Um, and we've got the output coming out of here. Goes through a, uh, a filter there. 10 megahertz bandpass filter. And uh, then uh, comes out one of the uh, jacks. The other side is going to go through a uh, inverter buffer. Um, ganged up to give more current output. And then straight out to give us our TTL. And uh, then obviously the... Uh, What's the name there? The uh, boost converter will sit there, and we're going to have a USB at the back, and uh, it will just be powered off USB power, up to 12 volts to run the oven in the uh, and the oscillator, and uh, yeah, a little USB powered 10 megahertz frequency reference. So I'll get some more parts on the bench, and we'll have a look at uh, getting this thing together. We'll just have a quicker, a quick little squiz at the uh, boards, because uh, as usual, they're looking really good. Not much going on the back there, just the usual double-sided green PCB. But yeah, as usual, the quality is quite, quite acceptable, quite good. Not a problem there whatsoever. So give me a moment, we'll go to a, uh, go to a time lapse and uh, get this thing constructed. And we'll talk about the circuit design as well. Okay, so here we've got the schematic. Uh, this is a little bit different from what I'll actually be making because I made some modifications and um, if I make a version 2 I'll make some more modifications which I'll detail in a moment. Uh, anyway, working from left to right, uh, we've got the USB port here and uh, there's two connectors here. We've got one labelled data and one labelled shield. Uh, basically the uh, data allows you to short the, uh, the two data lines together because some chargers, most notably uh, Android compatible chargers, will give you extra power on the, uh, the 5 volt line if you short the data pins and that will give us uh, the ability to do, to do that. Also the shield here, it just isolates the shield of the USB port from the, uh, the circuit ground if need be to stop ground loops depending on what's being connected to. But um, these will probably just be left alone but they're there just in case I needed them. Uh, then we've got the 5 volt rail that goes through and connects through a 330 ohm resistor to a uh, LED on the front panel. Um, I connect it to the 5 volt so that don't need such a high power resistor. I'm not dropping so much voltage into that um, LED uh, as I would if I connect to the 12 volts. Then also we've got the 5 volts here through a, a decoupling capacitor and whatnot for the, uh, the power for the Schottky uh, buffer inverters. Then it comes over to the power supply which is uh, of course uh, set before we connect our um, our oscillator. So out of circuit I'll just uh, dial that into about 12 volts. Um, that comes out through to our little magic box, the uh, 10 megahertz oscillator, oven controlled crystal oscillator, and uh, out of there we get our 10 megahertz over here. So the bottom section all along here is the um, is the 9 megahertz to 11 megahertz fifth order Butterworth filter. So as I said before if I um, made a version 2 I'll probably change this 
uh, I might go to an op-amp solution because uh, this does drop quite a bit of the amplitude as it is expected because it's chopping away parts of the, uh, the square wave. Um, and the output is usable, but it's a little bit lower than what I'd like. And, you know, I could put an amplifier in there. But if I'm going to put a transistor amplifier in there or something or other, I may as well just put an op-amp um, low-pass filter or an op-amp uh, band-pass filter to replace this section here. So that will be in a later revision if I get around to it. But as it is now, it does work. This, um, this filter does give out a really nice sine wave. And, um, yeah, that's perfectly usable. Then coming up the top here, this is slightly different because I don't have currently the uh, this stuff around here, the capacitor and the uh, trim pot, and I don't have these resistors, but I've added those in because um, it does help to uh, isolate the two sections of the circuit with the uh, capacitor here, the little decoupling capacitor or the uh, blocking capacitor or whatever. And uh, it comes through to this, uh, this resistor, this uh, trim pot between 5 volts and ground, so we can set a bias on the signal as we need to uh, to allow the, uh, the shockies to catch on to that signal and... Um, uh, do their magic, the, uh, the shocky buffer inverters. Now on the, uh, as we come through here, um, we got the six of them ganged up. That gives us extra uh, uh, current output because they're only good for like, I don't know, I can't remember for this chip, 10 milliamps, 15 milliamps, something around there. So by ganging them up, we multiply that out by six, but we don't get the full amount um, because the chip is only good to about 150 milliamps maximum. But by ganging them up, I figured, hey, it's going to give us more power and um, it'll put less stress per gate because uh, it's all divided out. So even if you do pull a bit of current, um, it's not going to uh, burn out one or two of the gates if only those two are connected. So that gives us a bit more headroom um, up to the, like I said, up to the, uh, the limit of the, the chip itself. So then we go through our resistors. Uh, these here are what set the um, output impedance to 50 ohms. They're 274 ohms, which is a little bit more than 50 ohms, but what we've done is uh, I've taken into account the uh, gate impedance, added that to the resistor, and then that gets divided down because there's six of them, and that comes to pretty close to 50 ohms on the output there. So that is basically our circuit to get our TTL output here and our sine wave out here. So uh, let's go and put this thing together. We are all done, all soldered together. I apologise for not um, including the SMB soldering in the uh, in the time lapse. My head was right above the uh, the workpiece. Looking down, you just see the back of my my head, my messy hair. So uh, yeah, that's just a um, a filter network to filter out all of the uh, the square wave into a uh, into a sine wave. So I've got a hole in the back there. Cut that out, fold it to a square. That's our USB input, and then um, on the front. Nice labelled panel, looking pretty good. So basically what I did, I just used a laser printer and print onto some sticker paper or some sticker sheet. You can buy this laser printable uh, sticker, like just clear plastic with an adhesive on the back. And what I do is I like to print it out, uh, my design, obviously in just in black and white um, for this one because the uh, printer at home is just black and white. And then I use some of the, uh, the spare paper or the spare sticker that hasn't been printed on and I laminate over the top, that way it's not going to scratch off. 
And uh, often it'll, it'll look a little bit like, if you look carefully, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it might look a little bit blotchy, but often i found that that goes away with time just as the, uh, the adhesive settles down and sticks into place. So uh, overnight, that'll come looking better. You might notice something in there, on the, there on the front as well. One volt peak to peak and five volt TTL. So the five volt TTL is looking pretty good. I had to use a uh, 74 ACT14 to get the um, highest speed. The LS series just isn't fast enough. You end up with a, uh, as it comes up to five volts, it's not nice and square. It's kind of curves up, then drops down, then curves up and then drops down. So you get this kind of horrible edge. But the ACT, uh, series is pretty good, so that's giving me a nice square wave. We'll have a look at that in a sec. But the one volt peak to peak sign, I might um, do something about that because uh, that is a little bit low. That's just coming through the network because this this filter network does drop the amplitude down just through its function of filtering. And then we have obviously got the uh, LED, the power LED in the middle. So another effect I've found with this, uh, once I connected the uh, filter network, there's something to do with the impedances and that. It's made the output here not 50% um, duty cycle. It's more like few percent off so it's more like I don't know 45 percent duty cycle I think what I'll do is I'll put a one nanofarad capacitor between the crystal and the chip and then I'll have a uh, a 10k resistor there between um, five volts and ground this is a voltage divider so I can kind of alter that level up and down tune it up as I need to to get um, a nice even uh, 50 percent duty cycle square wave out of that chip but we'll see how we go so let's put this back together um, actually I should put the lid on and then that can go in there all right so I uh, got it connected up to my uh, good scope now the TDS 784d 1 gigahertz scope so uh, you can see there we've got a nice sine wave coming out uh, 10 megahertz uh, frequency the uh, rise time doesn't really matter because it's a sine wave peak to peak is 840 millivolts so that's what I was talking about I want it to be a bit um, a bit taller uh, a bit more voltage there the RMS is 284 millivolts so um, yeah that's uh, it's usable but I'd like it to be a bit more at least to be like maybe even just one volt peak to peak exactly so uh, that, that's that's revision two so that's looking good anyway so um, let's go over to the square wave and uh, it's not looking as good as I thought it should. So without that uh, that filter network connected, it is a nice 50% uh, duty cycle. But here you can see it's uh, it's not. So um, I'm gonna have to uh, figure out uh, what to do there, like with that capacitor and that uh, trim pot and whatnot in version two. So there's a little bit of overshoot as well, but that's just uh, yeah, I'll figure that out as part of a uh, revision two. But yeah, it is a square wave. It is a, uh, a 10 megahertz the rise time 2.5 nanoseconds that's fine that's really nice um, and uh, yeah the, oh, by the way these are, are into 50 ohm terminated um, inputs on the scope too so uh, um, yeah the little side offset as well hopefully that uh, capacitor that one nanofarad capacitor will um, pull that back up but we can uh, play around with that later on well I'll play around with it later on but for now we're getting 10 megahertz out and it's a square wave so that's good enough for me at this point in time so there we go. That is done for now. Um, keep an eye out. I'll have a uh, version 2 coming sometime in the future and we'll uh, fix up those few little bits and pieces and get this thing working just perfect. So uh, I hope you found that informative, somewhat interesting and uh, we'll see you in the next one.